All right, so in this tutorial, I am going to teach you how you can add a little bit of pizzazz to your header if you are using the Cadence Framework. So I am gonna show you very specifically how you can create a mega menu. And what that is, is when you hover over an element in your navigation menu, you have just more information that's popping up to your user that's different than that traditional drop-down menu. So it just kind of makes your site look a little more custom without that custom price tag because I'm gonna show you exactly how to achieve that look. So let's first discuss what it is that you're going to need in order to do what I'm about to show you. So first and foremost, you need to be using a Cadence theme. So it can be the Cadence framework all by itself or it can be a Cadence child theme. We are specifically going to be using the Fusion theme from Restored 316, but like I said, you can use any Cadence theme. So as long as you're using that, then you can follow along with this tutorial. The second thing that you'll need is Cadence Blocks, which is the free version of Cadence Blocks. Um, and that's found in the WordPress repository, so you can easily install that. And then you will need the premium plugins for the Cadence Blocks Pro and Cadence Theme Pro, and that's what these two things are. So you will need those um, that are available through Cadence, and I will put my link below uh, this video so that you can get that if you need to get that. Uh, but you would be looking at the premium bundle to make sure that you get both Cadence Blocks Pro and Cadence Theme Pro. So just make sure you're, you're getting both of those. Now once you have both of those plugins installed and active, um, you'll have to register them with your license code and all of that. You'll see a little notice at the top of your screen. You'll have to enter in your license key. And then after that, you're going to pick up with what I'm about to show you. So the very first thing we need to do is enable some of the features that we're going to need in order to create this mega menu. So we're gonna navigate to appearance and cadence. All right, and then we're gonna scroll down a little bit and you'll see this pro add-ons area. Now, if you don't have those plugins installed and active, you will see all of these are locked. And so if you don't see what we're looking at here, then those plugins are not installed properly. Um, but you'll see this um, if they are, and we need to enable two things. So the first thing we need to do is enable this ultimate menu feature. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And so that will give us the ability to create a mega menu. And then second, we need hooked elements. And this will allow us to create the actual design, which will be inside of an element that's going to pop up under this mega menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on. Now by default, just kind of an FYI, when you are using the pro versions of Cadence Blocks Pro and Cadence Pro, all of these features that you see here will be off by default. Um, they do that so that you can come in here and just turn on the things that you need so that you are not adding a bunch of extra fluff to your site that is not necessary. Okay, so you will have to come in here and turn those on. All right, so now that those are on, I am going to refresh my screen because Elements is going to pop up here under Cadence and we will need access to that. All right, so now we, you'll see that here and I'm gonna click into Elements and we are gonna start by creating a new element. So this part of the process is literally just creating the design of what is going to pop up when someone hovers over this navigation item, okay? So we're gonna choose content section and then we're gonna go ahead and give this element a name. So this name is just for our reference. It's only seen on the back end. No one's gonna see it on the front end. So you wanna give it a name that it's very self-explanatory, especially if you end up with lots of elements for your site. Um, in particular, you want to be able to know exactly which one this is. So I'm gonna name it Mega Menu hyphen uh, Recipe Index because what we're going to be creating is a mega menu that's going to happen when our user hovers over Recipe Index, okay? And then we are going to start building out what this looks like. Now, you can get as creative as you want um, with the way that this is going to appear. Um, you could do some subcategories, um, you know, kind of in columns. You can do some featured posts that are, you know, maybe your most popular recipes. Um, you can do the, you know, images like this that are all broken down by subcategory. So, you know, instead of that typical drop down menu that comes down and you just see all the names, they could see, you know, all of these. Um, so there's lots of different options um, that you can do to, you know, kind of enhance this mega menu. But what we're going to create here in this um, video is on the left side, we're just going to do some links, some like subcategories. And then on the right, we're going to add some featured posts, okay? So that immediately when someone hovers over this, they're gonna see like, okay, these are the top posts 
and kind of entice them to click around our site and into those recipes. All right, so let's go back to our element and we're gonna start with creating um, this look, okay? So we're gonna hit plus and we're gonna select a row layout. Now, the six uh, blocks that we see here are the ones that we have used recently. So if you're not seeing row layout, you will just search for it here in the search field. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select row layout. And I'm gonna choose this format because like I said, we're gonna have the links on the left and we're gonna have some posts on the right. So I already know that the left column needs to be narrower than the one on the right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. And there's two more things that we need to do for this row layout to make sure that it goes all the way across the screen and then the content stays in the middle. So the first thing we do is click on this icon and we're gonna select full width. And then we'll select this icon and enable this use theme content inner width. And what that does is it just puts the content in the middle of our row instead of stretching it all the way across the screen. Because for somebody like me who has a large display, um, I've got this white space here on the left and right, which is what we want. Um, we don't want that content going all the way from left to right on the screen. So I want this content that's going to pop up under recipe index to kind of keep this same width that is going on all the way down the page, okay? All right. On the left side, we are going to add a title. So I'm gonna choose this text advanced block and I'm just gonna add a title here and we're gonna do browse by category, okay? And then I'm gonna hit enter. And then another way we can add a new block instead of hitting that plus icon is typing this little dash on your keyboard and it will bring up this list to be able to search for different blocks. So you could just start typing the name of the block and then hit enter and it's automatically there for you. So in this example, I'm going to do icon list and I can choose my arrows on my keyboard and select icon list and hit enter and it will automatically add it for me. Now I'm just going to give some uh, links here that would be added. Um, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then we'll do um, sides um, and then let's do um, drinks and desserts. All right, and then on the right side of the screen, um, we are going to add post. Now, there are two different post blocks um, that you can use. Now, since we are using Cadence Pro anyway for this feature, I would recommend that you're using the uh, Cadence Post Grid block uh, because it gives you a lot more options to customize the way it appears, and then it will also allow you to very specifically choose the post that you want to appear in the space versus the post block, which is just the word post, right? Um, it's very limiting on how much you can customize and you can only filter posts by category or tag. You can't specifically choose the post that you want to appear there. So I know a lot of people like a little more flexibility with that feature. So I'm gonna go with the post grid block. So I'll hit plus and it's already here for me. So I'll do post grid. And then we're gonna choose this format and then we're going to make some customizations to it, okay? All right, so basically what I want this to look like is I want three or four blog posts that appear here from left to right, and I only want the image and the post title to show up, and we're gonna get rid of everything else. So let's just go in and make some customizations here. So number one, let's go ahead and change the number of, of posts that appear here to three. And then I'm gonna scroll down to layout settings, and we're gonna change the columns to three. And then I'll close that and then we'll open up image settings and I'm gonna change the image ratio to a square. So just a one-on-one -on -one ratio there, okay? And I like the way that looks. Now let's go to a style and I'm gonna scroll down to footer settings and I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna remove this border that's here on the footer. Now in the next step, we will be removing the date and everything that appears here. But even though we remove that, doesn't mean it removes the border. So we want to go ahead and remove that border here. So I'm just gonna zero that out. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip to advanced and I'm gonna choose above title categories and I'm gonna go ahead and disable. And then let's go to um, the excerpt and I'm gonna disable that. And then we've got our footer meta and I'm gonna go ahead and disable all three of those. So now we just have our image and our title. I'm gonna go back to the title and I'm gonna reduce the size of those titles a little bit. I feel like they're really large right here. So I'm gonna open up our title settings, our title typography settings, and we're gonna go ahead and decrease this. Let's go to 18 and then I'll change my line height to 18 as well. Or actually, let's bump that up to 20. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna select this title here and I'm gonna change this to an H4 instead of an H2. 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of margin under this. So I'm under the advanced tab and margin on the bottom. I'm just gonna add a little bit of space there between um, the title and where those links begin. All right, and then I'm gonna open up our list view here so that we can see everything that we've got going on here. And I'm gonna select the row layout. And because there's so much white space here, I want to get rid of as much of that as I can within reason. So I'm going to take this little um, dial that's here in the middle and I'm gonna just pull this to the left a bit. And we're gonna do that so that it gives a lot more space for the posts that are gonna pop up here and a little less space for these links that aren't very long, okay? Now when I did that, it made this kind of go into a double line. So I'm actually just going to change the size of that font just a little bit um, and see if we can get it on one line maybe okay no we're not so let's just leave it at 14 I like the way that looks and now that we kind of see this I can see that I can probably add another post here so I'm gonna bump this up to number of items to four and then our, under our layout settings I'm gonna change that to four as well perfect all right I like the way that looks all right um, one more thing we're gonna do, so just using the fusion theme, um, this particular theme has some like borders here that have this floral design in it. And just to add a little bit of design detail in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add that so that it will kind of pop up on this mega menu. I just think that would add a nice little element there. So in this space down here, I am going to just make sure I'm clicked into there. And I'm gonna go to the design library and choose fusion. And then I'm gonna to go to the floral pattern um, category here so I can easily find the border I'm looking for. And I'm gonna choose floral border. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move that up. All right. And then I think I actually, instead of a white background on this, I think I want to do this real light creamy color in the background. Now when I do that, I'm under style and background color. When I do that, we can see that there's this white color that's coming through on our post and I want to remove that as well. So I'm gonna select post grid carousel here and let's go to style and I believe this one's under header settings yep and so I'm just gonna click on this little icon here and it's just gonna kick out that color that's currently in there for the background perfect all right so I like the way that looks and let's just save our draft here make sure we've got it nice and in there and then I'm gonna delete this paragraph that's right here that's kind of sitting out on its own and now we need to get ready to publish this element. So I'm gonna flip over to this icon here for our element settings and we've got a couple things we need to do. So for the placement, we don't need to select anything there because we're going to tie it into the mega menu in um, the menus panel. So for the placement, you can just leave that alone. For display settings, we can um, do this drop down, and we want this to be able to appear on the entire website. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then under user settings, we want this to appear for all users, okay? Now under device settings, we are going to make this available on desktop only. So just kind of a word of caution is that mega menus do not operate very well on mobile just because the space on mobile is so small. And depending on the design that you're doing for this mega menu, it may not work out quite great. So what I would actually recommend doing is doing your mega menu on desktop, but set a totally different menu for mobile only. So you would just have a traditional menu with the little drop downs on um, for mobile, okay? So for the, the device settings, we are just gonna show this on desktop. All right, so those are all the settings that we're gonna do, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish at the top just to make it um, active and available to us. We want to make sure it's published or else in the next step that we're about to walk through, um, it would not appear there, okay? All right, so I'm gonna click on the W and go back to our dashboard. And then now we're gonna go into our menus. And I am gonna flip over to our primary navigation, which is the one that is appearing right here with home blog, recipe index, and features. And I am going to open up Recipe Index and click on this Menu Item Settings, okay? And then we're gonna flip over to Mega Settings and we're gonna go ahead and enable the Mega Menu dropdown. And then under the Width, Mega Menu Width, we're gonna go ahead and choose Full Width. And under Columns, we're gonna do One. Um, we don't want the columns to be generated here. We want the columns to be generated in our design that we just created on the element itself, okay? 
And then for the background, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this as white just to make sure there is an actual background that appears there. And that is all I'm going to do. So I'm gonna hit save and close. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and save the menu down here. And then now we need to add a placeholder for the drop down menu and then we can assign the element to that drop down menu or to that drop down link I should say. So what we're going to do is do a custom link and in the URL I'm just going to type a hashtag and in the link text I'm going to type mega menu and I'm going to hit add to menu and then we're going to click this and drag it up just a little bit and we're going to make sure it's sitting slightly to the right under recipe index and we're going to drop it. This indicates that the mega menu will pop up below recipe index. And then we're going to open this up and I'll, actually we have to save it real quick before we'll see that option. Let's open that up and then you'll see um, the menu item settings. And then we are going to flip this over to menu settings and we're going to enable custom content. And then we're going to choose our custom element that we just created. So here's the name of the one that we created under elements. Um, and that's the name we gave it. So just make sure that's the right one. And we'll select that and hit save and close. All right. And then I will go ahead and hit save. And I will come to our site and let's go ahead and refresh. And you'll see there that now we've got this little arrow next to recipe index. And when you hover over it, suddenly you have this awesome looking mega menu that's coming up that just adds a little bit of flair to your header. Now, obviously in a real life situation, we would link all of these. I didn't do that um, just for time purposes, but you would link all of those and you can even change the icons of those or not have icons actually, if you, if you didn't want those either. Um, but this just kind of gives you an idea of a way that you can dress up your header with a mega menu.